Everybody, right now, look to your left, look to your right, look behind you, look at these faces. I'm telling you right now, 20 years won't make it to 20 years. Somebody in this room is going to die. Good firefighters die, smart firefighters die, brave firefighters die. Firefighters die on this job. We are here to make sure that you are trained to the best of your ability to reduce your chances of getting hurt or killed on this job. Is that understood? Yes, sir! Be good! One, two, three, four! This whole job is about attitude. You have to have the right attitude. Guys, we're going to break your chops. We're going to break your chops over things that you think are stupid. I'm telling you, you ain't getting away with shit. This is more than a paycheck. This is a calling. This is a lifestyle. You better get that through your heads. There you go. What are you doing? Can't do this. I don't want it like that either. Like this. Okay. What are you checking for? Checking the cell. Make sure it's staying. OK, good. I'm not here. What are you going to do with this? Throw it out. You're not going to throw it. I don't want to get hit with it. Next step. Okay. What are you doing? Checking the floor. Make sure it's solid. Good. You got the floor. OK. Three guys with the ropes. I want you to take the stairs instead of the goose deck, all right? All right. Who's next? You can let go now. All right. Get in position. See ya. This job is a life and death job. Your life and your brother's life depend upon it. You have to be 100%, 100% of the time. No excuses. You're on the payroll. You ain't in the brotherhood. You ain't in the brotherhood till the brothers in the firehouse say you're in the brotherhood. And there's a big difference. You have to understand that. This is the New York City Fire Department. We do things our way. It's done every day. Like the kitchen floor gets mopped three times a day, easy. That puts this door down, are you done? I'm very young to be in a, in a sock company with four years on, but there's a couple guys, maybe three and a half. So we're all like junior men, we group each other together. My desire to be a fireman started when I was a little child, before anything else. That's all I ever wanted to do. Put something inside me and said I wanted to be a fireman. But that was the only direction I had in life to be a fireman. So rewarding. You, you know, you don't see it in the paycheck, but you really feel it. Like, uh, I've basically been living here. You know, you see me every other day I'm here. With, uh, and uh, you don't mind. You actually wake up every day, not tired, you know, but you're like, oh, I, can't, I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to see what today brings. This is the glorious part of the job. Cleaning the sink. Somebody's got to do it. The amount of time to get the least desirable jobs. There's no sense complaining about anything because, you know, if you see something that has to be done, you complain about it. You can't complain about it. Just do it. Do it yourself. You know, just cleaning the sinks up or mopping the floors or whatever is a lot of pride, and you do it because you love being here. Be a kitchen bitch right now. You know, if I take the time out to clean this up and do a good job of cleaning it, maybe that's a reflection upon everything else I do. You can't be passing it on to the next guy. You got to do it. If you see something that needs to be done, you take care of it. The whole job is young. You know, the entire fire department is young. Um, some people think that I'm a young captain. Eleven of our guys came after September 11th, 2001, because we lost we lost six members that were killed, and um, we lost four guys to promotion. I lost three guys to retirement. So I have 11 guys that are new to the squad since uh, September 11th. We're just in a transitional stage. Never replaced those guys that we lost. Uh, but uh, you know, we just through training and through diligence, uh, we'll get back up to that same level. It's tough for new guys because they're coming to something that they want to come to this company, 
but they just they're coming at, at not such a good time for a new guy to come. It wasn't because under, they, it wasn't they, under our circumstances. They're coming under a time where we we have a lot of problems. Where we're dealing with the loss of our guys. <clears throat> the last thing we want to do is train new guys at, the, at that point last year. And it has been difficult. And it has been, guys, it has been, it has been a growing pains because, like you said, not only are you dealing with raw emotions, you know, from the tragedy, but you're also dealing with human instincts. Like, you know, I want to still fit in. I want to be able to prove myself. But it's hard because you're not only doing it on a physical level, you, uh, you know, you're doing it on an emotional level too because now I want Greg to like me as much as he liked his friends prior to here. There was people who were, death, who were, who were killed from top to bottom, and the bottom line is the perseverance from everybody is ca capable of, 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 of growing and getting back to where it was before September 11th. This is what we used to use, this is the chalkboard we used to use for our riding list. And that's the riding list from September 11th, those are the guys that their last, their last tour. Right now we just have the piece of plexiglass screwed in so nobody can erase it or mess with it. But we're going to try to figure out a way to permanently preserve it. Got everybody? One, two, three, four, five. Shatsy's driving. Fee's got the can. Hanky got the irons, and you hooked up with Mike. You got the hook control. Terry, you got the roof. First thing we got to do, we got to drill at 10:30 in the Saratoga building. We're gonna do standpipe operations and then uh, rescue of a uh, missing fire. Guys, listen up. Here's a scenario. We got a report of a fire. It's a fireproof building. 60, 70, and 80. That's the dispatcher's report. You're going to be the engine. You're going to be the truck. So you got it. Okay, you guys can go. Stand pipes in the other stairwell. I'm going up to seven. Go. Hit. 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 Hold up. Hit. Go. Hit! 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 Stop! Stop! That's all. You're going right. You're going left. Stay to the left wall. Okay? Don't let that door close behind you. Go! Go ahead, 18. You got it. Two, five, two to 18. We got the fire back here. Start the line, Ken. Back out that way. Back out, give him room. The front door. Keep co keep coming back. You got another ten feet. You're gonna go that way, and the front door is right there. Go. Go, go, go. We got all our tools. That was your basic forcible entry drill. You know, how to force a door, how to, how to perform a search, how to stretch a hose line, and how to get somebody out. Right from day one of probably school, you know, you're, you're putting a squad, and there's, there's the whole concept of teamwork. You have to have a team. You can't do it alone. You know, no one man is as good at, alone as we all are as a team. In the firehouse here, even at roll call, roll call, you all get together in the group, you decide what you're going to do for the day as a group, you clean the tools as a group, you're doing everything as a group. But like we said before, when you go out the door and now you go into a fire, now it's that life and death situation where that teamwork could mean the difference between life and death. The day you raise your hand and take that oath to do this job is the day the brotherhood begins. That's, that's the day it starts, because you, you got guys standing to your left and to your right, and those are the guys that are either you're depending on them or they're depending on you, for you and your life is in their hands and their life is in your hands. Exactly. It helps to like them, you know, you, you don't, you, you're just here for a 24 or you're here for a tour, but uh, you, you, it's impossible to like everybody you work with, <laughs> but once the tones go off, you leave all that stuff behind in the firehouse and you go out and you do your job bus chops for a reason, you know, uh, to teach you things, to teach you responsibility in the firehouse, to, you know, that you're going to be responsible for somebody that you're with, you know, you have to do your job and see it through to the end, and that seems to be the way we all learn around here. Just a 
drop. Spice up your life. Every day is a new experience here. From the lowest to the low. I'm just a probie. I'm a probie, I can't say much. <laughs> can't do much. <laughs> can't say much. It's the brotherhood. That's what it's about. Hey, you guys are probies. Anybody say you can talk? Huh? <laughs> Cornflakes, catfish. <laughs> it's Bronco's specialty. He was a part of the crew that was working September 11th. And, uh, he didn't know how to cook because he was a single guy <laughs> that uh, lived by himself for a long time. So, cooking meals that you know were favorites of some of the guys that were here that passed away is, uh, makes you feel good, makes you remember them, brings back uh, good memories. Was that too hot for you, man? Yeah, something about uh, hot metal. You should have been a cop. <laughs> Traditionally, you start out in an engine. You know, you get your uh, sea legs, and uh, you graduate usually to the truck. You start doing truck work, whereas it's more individualized, more specialized. You have more responsibilities in the truck. And then, you know, then you go to the rescue, where, uh, you know, you uh, have a ton more responsibilities. You go to all sorts of extra training. Uh, pretty much, uh, if somebody gets stuck somewhere, you have to go get them, you know, no matter where it is. Who's down the hall? Anybody down the hall? Yeah, we're just uh, recreating real training conditions here, that's all. Got to make it as real as possible. You set a fire down there. Straddle your hole. And, uh, ah! you gotta, you know, there's no turning around the hole either. It's a bit tight. So. Which side? OK, I see the ladder. See, yeah, watch the ladder as you go down. Yeah, I mean, but if you wanted to do a nice, quick repel, really can't do it, you know? Yeah, right, right. Uh, back to work, guys. All right, you guys just stay there and talk. I'll be okay. You guys are funny, huh? Not too bad, though. They missed. Kind of. Let me wash your shoes there, man. Get them a little dirty, yeah. That's how we uh, clean the shoes here, man. It's okay, guys. I got it. I'm done. All right, fellas. That is. They were actually pretty fortunate, the engine. Because the rescue company, we have a lot of experienced guys, and uh, they have a wealth of knowledge across the floor that they can pick from. Every guy's duty as a fireman is to pass on experience to the new guys. You, you, you're, if you're not doing that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're not doing your job. You know, if anybody hasn't told you, these only get used as a last resort as a backup. Yeah, that's what I was You do bring guys in there. You go to fires with them, or you tell them about special things to watch out for, things that are going to save their lives, things that senior guys told me when I got on a job. Richie, when we got on, there was guys like that that told us, hey, listen, kid, you know, uh, when you get up on a smoky roof, get down on your knees and crawl around. You know, you don't want to walk off the edge of the building, you know, or, uh, you know, just little tips and hints. Uh, how to force doors, you know, little things that maybe they didn't show them in probie school. A lot of this job is experience that's passed down from the senior guys. And there's a big change with the promotions, guys retiring, and that's, that's not just in this house. That's, that's the entire job. And uh, it's such a big transition through this job right now that uh, you're nervous for you know, anybody who's operating at the scene because you know that that experience level has dropped. And only time is going to make that stronger.
there's not really much for us to do. It's just a just a clump. It's like I don't know, maybe torture, maybe. Can't, you know. Fifteen to room O B and Can we're up. Said it was a transit worker. That's what you said. What else for one? That's the northbound T train. It'll work. Just like that. Basically, it was a transit worker that was hit uh, when he's putting up the signals for safety signals. Now it's a crime scene, and the PD will take over and take photographs, and uh, they'll have to remove the body and stuff. You'd be surprised how many people do it in this city. Right, Joel? It's unbelievable. Yeah, three to three to five a month on average. Doing this stuff for 14 years, you know right away whether you got out for it. First time you go to something like that, you know, dismemberment or whatever it happens to be, you know, you know whether or not you cut out for it, you know. I had a couple of them tell me, they say to me, tell my wife I love them, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. That's hard, kind of hard, you know. You know, this guy's last words. You know, and he, own, he knows it too. All right, let's go, we're out of here. Friday night in the big city. It seems pretty quiet though, right? Yeah, there he goes. He just put the light like, uh, on that. This is the night shift. This is the uh, 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning night tour. Normally, the uh, engine companies and the truck companies, they take care of what needs to be done. Uh, we're there in case. Uh, but a lot of times, we get used because of things being a, quite a bit different, more complicated, uh, more intense, more involved, uh, and uh, they, we get used for those situations. Well, I like to kid all my friends that, uh, that work in other boroughs, that I work in the city and they work in the suburbs, even though Brooklyn used to be its own city and is a, a rather large and unique place on its own, but for my way of thinking, Manhattan is where it's at. We don't have the frequency of fires, but we have more emergencies than the other places just because there's so many people here. Now with terrorism and radiation and biohazards and weapons of mass destruction, we're the ones that are going to fight the battle in the streets. The September 11th, the captain who was assigned here was killed, and they uh, asked me if I'd like to come down here, and I accepted, and uh, I consider it a great honor to be here. Uh, it's. It's a challenge. It's a challenging place to work. I've been underneath the top parts of bridges. I've been in tunnels. I've been in collapsed buildings. I've been in submerged vehicles, on top of skyscrapers, in tenements, inside of tanks. Whatever could happen eventually happens around here. Shoes on, jackets. Hey, hey, hey. Cookie shop downstairs. There's a cookie shop downstairs. Yeah. Squad I into Squad K. The tenants say there's a cookie shop downstairs. So. Yeah, New York City Fire in the train. Aggressive interior attack. Get in the building. Push the fire out of the building rather than go outside the building and push the fire in. So we go in and we aggressively attack the fire and push it, push it out and put it out. Is that cell fire? Why well, don't we got fire over our heads here? Why well, don't we got fire this way? We need a line down here. Let's go see all of Squad eyes, squad K. Whoever in the basement came, we knocked down the main body of fire. 10-4, North. North, we down there. We got the body of fire knocked down. It's just charged like a mother. We need ventilation. Hey, Don. Yeah, you went to basement found a fire in the cellar? Yeah. Well, we went up, we went up the stairs, and it was just smoke. And I, did you hear me say it's yeah. in the cellar? I was telling everyone it was in the cellar. 
Yeah, it's in the cellar. <laughs> That's where I found it, in the cellar, you know? Fire itself is a force to reckon with. You have to respect it, man. It'll take you in two seconds. It has no conscience. Gun. I've always been in the ghetto for 23 years, and uh, I never worked in a, a well-to-do neighborhood. Where are you? You got everybody? There's a lot of fire activity in Brooklyn. As we say, it's the borough of fire. It's a good place for young guys to come because you learn how to be a fireman here a little quicker than anywhere else. I really don't like to call it a ghetto firehouse because it's, uh, generally the neighborhood is um, it's just a poor neighborhood. For the most part, I've been here uh, in 79, and this neighborhood, specifically Bushwick, is the second poorest in the city. Consequently, there's a lot of fires. And there's a lot more situations that you have to deal with. It's a little more busy than a lot of other places. And it's a little more exciting. And everybody seems to want to be in a place like this or a place in a neighborhood like this. That bell goes off, you get on the rig, you hear that radio code 1075. You get some adrenaline pumping, you, you got 100 pounds of equipment on you, and you just you can run through walls and jump from building to building, from fire escape to fire escape. The unknown is exciting. Every fire is different, every fire is unique, you know. It starts in the basement, it could start in the cockle, it could start anywhere. You need all your senses at a fire. You need to hear it, you need to feel it, you need to see it, you need to smell it. Actually, fire has a life, and it actually speaks, at least to me it does, and you want to fight it. So you're constantly fighting the devil when you're in a fire. If you really listen to a fire, it, it has a sound, and it sounds devilish. And it's starting to boil, and it, and it sounds like it's talking to you. And it's, you don't like it. it. It's kind of unnerving, it's kind of hot, it's kind of scary, but you, you know, you know the fire's gonna go out, and you gotta get in there and put it out, because you might save somebody's life, so you don't stop. supposed to be going in there you know everything in, in human nature tells you don't go in and that doesn't make us actually sane people you know well, a lot of firemen are insane good insane but they're insane because you know it don't make a whole lot of sense to do what we do sometimes underneath all the rough exterior and all the rough rough crap that you'll see a lot of there's got to be some caring you got to care for other people you won't get a lot of guys to admit that Got it. Otherwise, why would you do it? Oh. You want to cut that? Actually, I do, if you don't mind. Yeah, you can cut it if you want. Wait, just cut the breast. See what it looks like inside. Oh, yeah, she's not done yet. Let's see. I don't know, bro. It's close. It's November 28th, Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Guys with younger children get off for the holiday. All right. Like Tommy's our senior guy. He stepped up to work so somebody else that has younger children can have the day off. I'm sure uh, some of the guys wanted to be home with their families. I know I did, but. Again, luck of the draw and how the chart falls. The guys that are new to the company, they, you know, guy that's got time in the house, will, they'll step up to work for them, you know, just out of respect for the senior man, you know. But, um, yeah, that's what's happening tonight, I believe. There's a couple of guys working for a couple other guys. And that can go under the bunk for now, and we'll set it up in the office window later. Captain Metcalf's playing father. <laughs> Let me tell you, because with the crew we got tonight, it's like a bunch of kids he's got with him. Putting out the finest silverware we have with the nice napkins, doilies. 
Paul, can you do me a favor? What? So that first pie that's in the oven, can you pull it out? The zucchini pie? It's kind of barking out of one. I like little, little mussolini today. Today? Today you like little mussolini? How about every day? Just check the thing for me. Please. You want this? Put it on the stove. Are you putting whipped cream on this too? No, that's for dinner. This is going to be for the dog. Yeah, I don't want it. Thanks for coming in early, bro. Do the right thing. I wanted to relieve the uh, senior man. So I get Tommy Burke. 24 year man fireman, so I wanted to get him home. So, you know. Plus, I miss these guys. They're like a toothache. Did you bring the gravy boat? No, I didn't bring the gravy boat. You didn't bring the gravy boat, huh? This is a riding list. Every, every day we come in, we have to fill out a riding list that it tells you what's your position. Today is the, the, the date, 928. Well, it's 1128, I think. Today's the day tour. And the officer is Lieutenant Makla. I'm the chauffeur. A seated chauffeur is Norton. That's my nickname, as in honeymooners. You're going to the moon, Alice. Just go to any fire department function and say Norton, and they'll know who you're talking about. In any borough, in any, any fire department function, Norton is Norton. This is a Halligan tool right here. And this is the most important tool in the truck. This forces doors, pulls ceilings, takes windows. You break windows with it. You can force doors with it. Put it in and use it as a crowbar. You can, you know, use a can opener method. Um, First, Norton is good. He's good at what he does. And second, because he's got, he's got a unique personality. He likes to have fun when he works. I mean, when the, when the bell rings and and it's blowing out a couple of windows, he's not funny then. He's a, he's a, one of the best firemen I've ever worked with. The can has about three gallons of water. It's a press this handle and it comes out. So every position is key. The roofman gets his gets the roof, uh, the forcible entry team forces the door, finds the fire, the engine's stretching the line, the guys behind them are ch chasing the kinks, hooking up, getting water, and uh, it's teamwork. And if, it, if everyone does their job, usually the job goes like clockwork. Oh, 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 God, I'm not gonna have an appetite. Come on, bro. I'm not gonna have an appetite. You're so wrong with you, bro. You were definitely, there's definitely something wrong with you. Pork chop, open this door. Get well, get the key and open the door. We have the same training as rescue, but the rescue does not have the hazmat rig. That's all the special equipment that nobody else has other than the squad. And this is the stuff that we were specially trained on. And this is what makes us unique. This is a level A hazardous materials entry suit. You need this to enter a hot zone of the hazardous materials unit. This protects you. You put your Scott cylinder on first, so you, you have uh, inhalation protection. Then you're inside the suit, you obviously have protection from absorption. This gives you the maximum level of protection. The squads and the hazmat units are the only ones that carry it. This is the kids' end over no, here. No, you no, sit on that the, the, adults, the adults, the adults, the adults are on this end. Chuck, where's some of this stuff? That's carrot pie. It's, it's, trust me, it's very... <laughs> no, bro, listen, you busted your You have to expand your mind. Right. No one's gonna say grace. You wanna say grace? Yeah, no one's gonna say so, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like something. Do we hear this, for God's sake? say grace. You stinking animals. Uh, what is this? I don't know. What you mean, don't make it. You knew it. You had to know you knew it. You knew it. You knew it. Tell the fact you get the baby on either. What is it called? Order gas. Classic, classic. Absolutely classic. Listen, Thanksgiving dinner. It's a gas leak in the cellar over there. Pretty routine. But it just came at the perfect time. You knew when we were going to sit down for Thanksgiving breakfast. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you knew that that was it. You knew it. Bless the Lord for this, it gives you faith to see from the bounty of Christ the Lord. Amen. They bless the Lord spread. Amen. Hey, Sean, bro. Happy, Miss Grace. Who said it? I did. Do you want to say it? No, he's still in for you, Captain. As usual. As usual. Very good. Well, you did a great job. Hold oh, down. Is that stuff in there, funny? This is stuff in there. Yeah, pick that one. These are called utensils. This is a fork. Put the food on the fork and put it in your mouth. You did a stuff. Eat a fork out of your mouth. He's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Okay, here's the deal. I work here, Joel works here. Our friend Frank was downstairs, but I think he fell off the ladder. So you're gonna have to go down and get this guy. Any questions you have about the space or the mechanical equipment around here, you can ask Joel or myself. All right, on your toes. Ready. Hands over your okay. head, don't put yeah, yourself right, between well. metal and metal. Okay. okay. Nice. The acknowledge seniority. The more fires you go to, the more time you put on the job, the more you know, the more val valuable you are to a company. Senior man is almost like a, a title. Paul is the one who's been here the longest and knows the most about the place. Therefore, his knowledge is very valuable. So we all rely on it. Osmo's 10 minutes on air. All right, get him out of there now. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Let's go, keep going. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a great day, Daniel. Let's go. Fast, fast, fast. Come on up slow. Ten feet from the top. Hold slow, hold slow. That's up slow. Five feet from the top. Five feet. Five feet. Up here. That's it. You go. Keep going, you got it. All right, very good, very good. Very good. You all right? Good. All right, very good. The one decided advantage you have when you're working in the company is that you have guys with different levels of training where as soon as you get there, somebody's going to know right what to do. Hopefully. And in a short time, that'll be you when you pull up. Because it's not going to be long until you're the senior guy. It happens to everybody. We're kind of like lifers. People put a lot of time. Uh, I've put a good part of my life in this fire department. That's for the snake guy. And it boils down to your rank, your seniority, and the most important thing is your reputation. Your reputation is the big thing. And it takes a long time to build a good one, and you can lose it very fast. If you have a good rep, uh, and you're respected, uh, that's basically the highest uh, form of praise you can give somebody, that he's a good fireman. Job in the world. You get to drive the rescue. Doesn't get any better than that. That's the kind of people we all want to work with. You want everyone to be able to take care of you, you're going to take care of them, and, and together we take care of the people that can't help themselves. One of the construction workers was standing by and then actually struck him. Yeah, back off. The elevator, five flights up, and then you gotta go up. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You never know. Off we go to the next endeavor. Shots are not gonna help. Thank you. That was Artie. He wanted to know if we needed a messenger van to get the guys back and forth to the community board meeting tonight. Hey, El Capitan. What do you think of the fact that Chatsy didn't shave this morning? What, his legs? Oh, take a, take a look at the camera. Hey, Don't you think you should shave? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, what an improvement. You're going through a meeting, so I'm not going to do nothing. God bless you. Hey, give me a kiss, big boy. <laughs> Thanks for taking the stride. 
Police say the fire was set at 741 Thursday morning in a tailor shop, possibly by a former employee. 15 fire units responded. Although Engine 44 isn't one of the eight firehouses the FDNY has slated for closing, it might be replaced with a squad company that responds not just to local, but citywide calls. Firefighters hope Thursday's performance helps convince top brass that's a mistake. 844 deserves to stay. 844! Yeah, yeah. That's all they do at 8.30 in the morning. In front of the firehouse. <laughs> the Upper East Side, you think they're going to let us start yeah, buying sores on the sidewalk at 8 in the morning? That they move us to the Upper East Side, which is one of their proposals, then Community Board 4 would have no engines whatsoever. The best way to win this is to hit the public, hit the council, uh, the political activists, and do it that way, because that's the only way we're going to win it. So we're expecting, hopefully, a big turnout of the community in support for 252. EMS! Electric reaction. They're moving three firehouses from our neighborhood, not one in Manhattan, three from Brooklyn. This building, 218 Schaefer Street, has been burned down six times in five years due to arson. A man burned in that building, a Mexican man burned in that building. But they saved his wife and his three kids, this firehouse that they're getting rid of. This area is called the dark side of Bushwick, the most poor side of Bushwick. But yet they removed three firehouses from here. So tonight on 195 um, Wilson, we're going to have a, a, a community meeting and we're going to try to stop the removal of this firehouse. Can everyone please sign in? We collect these signatures, a petition to help keep the firehouse open. Tienen que firmar aquí. Tenemos una petición para ayudarnos para que dejen la estación de los bomberos abierto. Okay? Gracias. But this is a big fight, and we're going to need the help of everybody in this room. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Faro Commander Coletta from the New York City Fire Department. Thank you. Anna Gonzalez, who's the chairperson of Community Board 4. Thank you. What we're going to do now is open up for questions and answers. The gentleman there. Tonight, a little girl had an asthma attack right next to my house. They called at 5 o'clock because I was right out front of the house. At 505, 252 was there giving the little girl oxygen. The ambulance didn't come for 20 minutes later. Who else would have been there when, who's gonna be there when you take them to Manhattan? The gentleman there. Now, they gave us two reasons why they're moving this company, 252, from Central Avenue. One is finance, and then they turn around and says because of some terrorist attack. It doesn't take any longer for squad 252 to get to Manhattan, because you know when they left here that day, they were in Manhattan and died in that collapse with the, some of the guys got there first. So it doesn't take that long. Now, what I want to know is, what is the reason for moving the company? Is it finance or is it because of the terrorist attack? The mayor gave us a mandate we had to cut our budget. But the only way we can get the money that they wanted was to close eight companies. As far as I know, it's not a plan, it's not a conspiracy to, to no, deprive your neighborhood of fire protection. None were closed, I think, in Manhattan, so uh, I, I just interested. Hold on one second. Captain Squad 252. My name's Ed Metcalf. I'm the captain of Squad Company 252, and I just like to... It There's a question that uh, I haven't had answered yet by the city, and I was just hoping, Chief Collette, with all due respect, that maybe you could look into the answer for this. In 1998, they reinstituted the squad concept, and they reopened squads throughout the, all the boroughs. They tried at that time to open a squad on the Upper East Side. They've tried several times since to open a squad on the Upper East Side. My question is this, how come now, all of a sudden, they want to take an existing squad and take it from where it is and put it on the Upper East Side. Is it financial? Or is it because That's of the terrorist question, attack? And I can't give you that answer. Let's take all these. I'll give them all? Yeah. It's going to tear our hearts out. But they can't take 252 from us. They can't. But I remember the first time I walked into this house. They were making it a squad. And they were looking for. Uh, lieutenants to come here, and I walked in and I just had a good feel. I just had a good feel in this firehouse walking in. This is where I wanted to finish up. 
I got promoted. I came back to the house. I got promoted out of, and uh, this is where I wanted to finish up my career. A fire is a fire. Um, a firehouse is a firehouse, and this is home. You know, you come here. This is home. Forty-two hours out of the week, this is home. What they're doing right now is tearing them, tearing the heart out. No. Unfortunately, they know. When I say they, the bean counters know that no matter what they do to this job, they're still going to have a hundred guys for every one spot. A hundred guys on the outside that want to be a fireman for the one spot that's there. It's very competitive around here. About getting in and guys getting on a rig real fast. And uh, when you're an old dog like me, it's it. There's a little bit of a oomph to your to your stuff. I'm older than New York. <laughs> Ah, we're never going to let the traditions die. The traditions are in here or in here. But again, we're firemen, and we all do what we're told when it comes down to it. And if it does come down to it, push comes to shove, and they move us, we're going to go. Such a handsome. It's a dollar I know, such a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Where are you from? California. Portland, Oregon. Portland, We're all from all over. Oh, we have Austin. This is Paul's last day on the job. It no. is. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so Thank you. much. Good to meet you. Thanks for taking time out. Take Thank you. We'll see you. Are you have right fun here? out there. Thank you. Thank you. When I was a young teenage boy growing up as a firefighter, and all throughout the country, there was a couple of rescues right in a close period of time that Paul was involved in that made the whole country aware of Paul Hashigan. Um, one was the news helicopter crash when he rescued the news reporter and the uh, pilot from the helicopter. Paul was the rescue diver that went out. He went down not once, but twice. He went down first, got the reporter, brought her up. And then he went down again to get the pilot out of the helicopter. And I was just a young kid then, and uh, so Paul was like a legend. And then to be able to come here and work with him was pretty cool. Good luck. Good luck in your retirement. He's probably one of the most decorated firemen in the city of New York we're losing. Now it's sort of like I can't go to the old guy and uh, <laughs> beg some information out of him. So, I mean, it, that makes it tough there. You know, you, you're really in the hot seat now. That's the way I feel. Get me in this. This man is closer than get the fire today. Put it out. It's another proud moment to fire the fire. Stand by for the following message. The old timer is leaving. <laughs> I've been working on this mural for a long time. So I guess I'm putting some finishing touches on. Everybody that's been assigned to the company is on the wall. That would be Captain Morris. He's noted for training firefighters across the country and how to get through doors and specifically how to get through locks. I think that might be me. It doesn't have my name on it, but I believe that's my uh, likeness. Joel's on the wall over there above that sign. Worked with Joel several years now, and he has to be one of the smartest guys I've ever worked with, so I gave him a little bit of Einstein's knowledge in his hand. Hey, it's the brain. Now I'm over here with taking notes. Me and my duck. I'll miss the guys, but I get to see the guys. I'll miss the house, but I get to visit the house. But I'll miss driving that truck. It's hard to get close. You got to kind of like just slide it right in and cut it deep. <laughs> oh, look. The truck. Yeah. It's his first words, his truck. <laughs> yeah, he's going to work out nice here. Today's my last day, so you can drive tonight on, OK? This is the tougher side to cut, the pulley on the saw. You ready? Slide it right in and cut it deep. Yeah. You're the best driver we have. Drive the fork right under there and pull it in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're still going to come and see the other fireman, right? Sure. Yeah. See Joel, yeah. <laughs> You're the best. Bye. Bye. There's a little boy that lives next door and has taken a shine to the truck. For 25 years, I did this, and I was successful at it. And I'm going out on my own terms. And so far, I'm not seriously injured. And a lot of my friends aren't with me anymore that just by the way things happened on one day. So I'm getting out of here in one piece and alive, and I'm grateful for that. So I just think when I had my time in there, I did a good job. And 
and I have the respect of the guys I work with, and I can ask for more than that. Eeyore. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's Elizabeth, my daughter. Think how skinny I look to be next to I'll be um, the senior guy to rescue one as of 6 o'clock today. This is the last time to back the truck in. Losing Paul is a big loss. I don't know whether a lot of people realize that we lost a lot of senior guys in that, you know, tragedy. So it's not too many left in the job. Ah, be a tough drive. So I don't have to come tomorrow, right? Well, I'm gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad of that. Joel! Yeah. You! You got it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, I'm not standing for you. Welcome to retirement. How do you? Don't put them down cellar. <laughs> yeah, your bot name's already gone from the box. <laughs> I'll oh, stay in here tonight. Goes in the boiler and we'll grab them. Chief, you don't have to help these guys at all. I know, you know, I know what it is. Right, good run. What are we doing next? Jack, we're gonna have Jack drive. You're the chauffeur. Okay, you're gonna get up the wheel spot tonight. Ah. The dirt caught up his mind. Okay, ready for battle? I heard that bell. Santa Claus might be here. Oh! Are you ready for Santa Claus, everybody? Where's he coming from? Who was there last year? spend more time with the guys in the fires probably than with anybody else, you know. Sometimes it's funny, like, everything I do is, uh, is, is firehouse related, you know. Uh, you know, all my best friends are firemen. You know, when I'm off, I'm hanging out with firemen. It's, it's, it really does become like a whole way of life. I mean, you have two families, but that's the thing about the firehouse. Some wives, they can't live with that sometimes. That you know, you're just as close sometimes to the guys in the firehouse as you are with your mate. I mean, I won't say that to my wife on camera, will I? Some guys you hear marriage, marriages just don't work because you're away nights. And for others, it works out. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know, I was on this job before I was married and had kids, so it's the way my whole marriage and existence has been, and it's, you know, I'm lucky. You know, this place definitely feels like home, so it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a bittersweet thing, you know, being promoted out of here. So many guys retired, and I guess, you know, all the guys we lost, so they're promoting pretty fast. So I'm getting promoted a lot faster than I thought it would be. Eddie, take Richie Witch up for the boat. <laughs> Rescue the room. Get yeah, Richie, the fire is mostly towards the front of the building, all right? Right by the wall, guys. Hey, hey, Liam. Hey, Liam, I think you got it, boss. I got Liam's been promoted, so I made him queen for the night. Wow. Hey, let's meet you guys here. I'm like a uh, heat-seeking missile. <laughs> so far, every fire I've ever gone to, it's every fire I've ever to goes out. Pretty good. <laughs> I had a boil with you tonight. I think those inside guys got an agenda tonight at yeah. being Liam's last tour and all. Yeah. It's nice to get promoted to the rank of lieutenant, but unfortunately, on a fire department, when you get promoted, you have to leave the firehouse that you're assigned to. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really not looking forward to leaving, but, you know, 
One off over a comment about my friend Liam. Have you ever had a big swollen tick stuck in your ass? <laughs> the day he gets promoted, it's going to be like when that tick gets pulled out. There you go. The tick is leaving. The tick is leaving. But I'll miss him. Dearly. I think that's a compliment. It is. Yeah. We don't have much time left to break each other's chops. He's getting promoted and I'm retiring in a month and a half. So we're getting our shots in while we can. Yeah. You guys will miss me when I'm gone. Oh, you're still here? Oh, yeah, not much longer. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but this guy deserves to go anywhere as he wants to. And that's a fact. Oh, there he goes. So the Johnny Lieutenant. <laughs> We're going to miss him on uh, just being around the kitchen. You know, we got to get uh, a new pet to kick around. All right. See you later. It's going to be a big loss to the company. You know, his heart is really great. And he loves the job. You know, that comes through also. So he'll be the same way as a boss. You know, he'll just uh, take real good care of the guys. So we're going to miss Liam, but we can't tell him that. You know? Please welcome the mayor of the city of New York, the Honorable Michael L. Bloomberg. Well, good afternoon. It's a, it's a wonderful occasion here today. 250 people being promoted to the ranks of fire battalion chief, captain and lieutenant. And on behalf of eight million people, I wanted to wish all of you the best and say congratulations. There are 15,000 men and women that make up the New York's bravest. And I just wanted to point out to you what a spectacular job they have done during the last year. There were fewer deaths from fire in this last year than any time in the last 75 years. That makes New York City one of the safest large cities in the country. And uh, thank you for a job well done. Lieutenant Gary S. Iorio, not a 45. Lieutenant Liam J. Flaherty, Rescue 4. Okay. Is this your final roll call, Cat? No, hell no. You guys talked to me this morning. About fire. Yesterday, there was a cockloff explosion. It bounced the guys five inches off the uh, off the roof. Yeah. Mark, you understand what he's talking about? Cockloff yeah, explosion? actually, uh, Lieutenant Citarello was telling me about it before, right. too. The bad thing, there's always an opposite reaction. So you think you're on the roof and there's a cockloff explosion. Well, it pushes the ceilings down on guys underneath. Because the ceiling is less structurally sound than the roof. So if something's going to give, it's going to go down. Yeah, it's going to go first, yeah. So for a rescue or squad company, we got to get in there because there's usually guys trapped. Yeah, yeah. That's how they got Kane. That's how Kevin Kane died and Pete McLaughlin from Rescue Four. Four. Rescue Four yeah. Sterling, were you in any of these fires? Negative. Jeez. All right, that's it. Okay. Senior guys keep an eye on the little guys, and nobody likes to see anybody get hurt. That's one of the responsibilities of a senior guy. But it's also the officer's responsibility. It's ultimately his responsibility. He's responsible for his company. Any officer who uh, is worth his weight, and that's his main objective, to end the tour with the same number of guys he starts the tour with. And um, that, I mean, you can train as much as you want, and you can drill as much as you want, and you can preach safety as much as you want, but it's a dangerous job, even when we do our job right. People get hurt and killed. And um, I guess that's the hard part of being a boss. That's the hardest part. It's, you know, just trying to make sure everybody's going to come home. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if I'd stop thinking about it. That'd be nice. But that's hard to do. Yeah, it is. Just, it was just too big. Too big to take in all at once. And that's why I'm, I'm beating myself up a lot because, you know, it's like 15 months later and I'm like, you know, okay, get over it. And I haven't yet.
I have a hard time sometimes. I'm, I'm emotional. I'm on an emotional roller coaster. Al, are you driving today? <laughs> Love this monkey. Corral. <laughs> hey, Ed, what's going on, bro? How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Today and tomorrow, and that's it. But we're getting you. I made the phone call, said I'm going to take this detail, I'm going to go out to the rock and do what I got to do mm -hmm. for myself and for my family. And 252 will get along without me. You know, now well, that I'm a day away from doing it, I'm having all kinds of doubts and second thoughts and everything else. But I know, I'm do well, the reason I'm, the main reason I'm doing it, I have to be honest, is selfish. I have to do it for my home life. Um, what's that's going well, on at that's, home? That's the reason why I, I came offline to make it my home life easier. Right. I'm, I'm glad you're coming uh, to Pro School. I tell you. I know you got doubts, I know you got second thoughts, and anything I'm gonna be able to help you do to erase them. Uh, where's the memorial going? Where's the, the, the thing you guys are building? Yeah, it's gonna be right it, inside the door. Has anything started yet? No. We're, we're kind of looking at what everybody else did, and don't want to overstate it, mm -hmm. but don't, you know, at the same time, you gotta do the right thing by the guys, and it's gotta be dignified. And you know, as a family member, what that meant. Absolutely. I had like a sort of shrine and headquarters, right? Yeah. All these pictures of my brother, all yeah. over the place. I wore a band, did everything, for a year. I gave it a year, right? After a year, I went, all right, you know? I, I mean, uh, you know what I mean, Norton, you know? There's no way, no way possible for any of us to forget. This is no way. We need our uh, slings, you know? Yeah, thank God. Uh, is that the original board? That's the original one? Yes. Still can't get used to that, man. You know? Can't get used to that. Got knocked down by a, a blast of air, and I uh, laid down in the middle. Of, I got knocked down in the middle of West Street. I was on my belly. I put my hands behind my head and I prayed. I I prayed to God for my family, and uh, I remember praying real quick. And please, if it's in you, we'll make this fast. If you talk to anybody who survived down there, who was close, they'll tell you a story about a guy that was 15 feet away, 50 feet away, 100 feet away, whatever. That's the way it went that day. It, it had nothing to do with, you're a good fireman, he's a bad fireman. You're a good guy, he's a bad guy. You were standing there, you were standing there. You were gone, you were gone. I'm standing here. Uh, when, uh, I don't know why sometimes, and I fight it sometimes, but I just have to be grateful to God and do something with my life that means something. Because uh, he kept me around for some reason. I'm not sure why yet. And what's this called, cheese? Chicken corn chowder. Cheese man special. Chicken corn chowder. Step right up. I've done what I could as far as the community boards and the political fight. I've started the political fight. We're doing what we can. And I'm going to continue to do what I can. But uh, Bobby has been with me the whole time. He's got all the, all the same phone numbers I have. So I'll probably hand off that section of it to him. 252 will be all right without me. I'm not that uh, conceited or big at it to think that it's not going to go on without me. It will. And uh, I have to do what I have to do for myself. He's still officially the captain here. You know, he was asked to uh, uh, become uh, the captain of the Provost School over at the Rock. He went there and he took the job. So, you know, if he came back, then that'd be great. But he's a good man. I hate to lose him. Prize are being delayed. Prize are delayed. Good to see it for everybody. Where's the chef? Come on, chef, tell. I'm glad you guys won't make it. I thought I'd have my soup. What's so funny? What's the matter with you, son? Get some cheese. Fromage. Yeah, fromage. Nice. 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 N
afterwards. Do you need any help with that box? <laughs> Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. All right. You got everything in that box? <laughs> Chaos. They were saying there was people trapped. We heard that there was people trapped on the radio coming in, and uh, I think they got out okay. I think actually they got everybody out, but I don't know if everyone's alive. It's a classic brownstone fire. They did it like clockwork. 214 stretched the line, 111 laddered the building, got, uh, did a roof rope rescue, put portables in there. They do what they do all the time. We got everything. A statement from the Department of Homeland Security says the intelligence community believes that terrorists will attempt multiple attacks against U.S. and coalition targets worldwide in the event of a U.S.-led military campaign against Saddam Hussein. Just after the president spoke, the nation's terror alert level was elevated from yellow to orange or high, and the Department of Homeland Security revealed details of a nationwide security plan called Operation Liberty Shield. My message today to the people of the city of New York is simple. Go about your lives as you normally would, and we will do everything in our power to protect you. Leave the worrying to the professionals and live your lives. Otherwise, the terrorists will win without doing anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down. Hey, no. All right. Just got a call from uh, 
the hazmat uh, ops. They're, they're receiving high-level threats, terrorist threats. So be aware. If anything does happen, we all stay together. You hear me? We all stay together. Nobody's going to do nothing stupid. My job here today is to make sure that you guys go home in the morning. All right? Yeah. If we're going down in the... The only kind of heroes they, they got to... We ain't rushing in. We ain't rushing in. Nobody's going to be a hero here. All right? But it could be anything. What they, what they told me is that... The, they might be targeting soft targets like uh, apartment buildings, you know, hotels. Uh, hotels, that kind of shit. So if we did have a mass casualty, we'd be doing both of these plus the APD, plus you'd be checking for uh, radiological at the same time. If we sample with both kits, we'll cover Saren, Tabin, Salmon, DFP VX, blister agents, lung agents, blood agents, nose and throat irritating yeah. agents. So the only thing this is gonna, actually this is test for is a biological. Right. You know, but chemical or nerve, you know, we should, have, we should pretty much have it covered. All right, I'll teach me. It's a radiation meter, three type of waves, alpha, beta, gamma. Bottom line, what's going to kill me? What's going to kill you? The doses. So if they suspect that, uh, well, nowadays a dirty weapon is going off or some kind of spill in a hospital, we put these on us when we go in. These ones actually have an alarm that goes off. These ones that look like a little pen actually have a gauge in there that you have to be zeroed out. And there's a scale, you look up into the light, and there's a scale in there. And if the scale's too high, basically it's a warning to get out. There's a lot more dangerous scenarios out there. There's, you know, the terrorism adds a whole other dimension that we weren't dealing with years ago. It primarily was just firemen put out fires, you know, you go in, get people out. I didn't realize we were going to do so much hazmat work, but, you know, it's the way the job is today. This is not for you. Yes, for the person coming You wouldn't use your own. Somebody right. would use yours on, on you, but you wouldn't use yours on somebody else. But believe me, if I need it, I'm going to use my own. Oh, absolutely. So you jam it in, and as you can, and immediately follow with that. I thought about retiring, but I always uh, loved, uh, loved my job. I uh, respect it, and uh, it took me a long time to figure it out and, and, and do it well. And, um, and we have a lot of young guys that need to learn. I think it's good to share it with them and teach them what I know. Sometimes you come into work and you think, well, geez, this is going to be the day that they do it again. You know? And I try and I put that, that thought in my, out of my head, and I just come to go along and do my job. It's like the rest of these bananas. You know? And the way some people cook it, it really could be medical hazardous waste. Most of these guys were on the job on September 11th, and they've been, they've been through hell. You know? Yeah, I love sitting my six friends out of this company. We almost, we almost lost another nine. We were standing on the corner of church before when the second time we came back. And yes, they came back to work. They didn't go home and hide in their basement and say, I'm never coming back. They came back to work. We built a company. They're doing their job. And yeah, when they come to work, they think about what might happen. But they're more worried about you know, what's, what's going to happen and let's prepare.
bring that other mini over here. We'll let you play with that a little bit. You see, that's how it opens the door, just like that. Uh, we're still on... I think it's level orange. The thing about being here is you've always been available and expected to go to everything that ever could happen in the city, so... I mean, I think our eyes are a little more open now. Not to be 11, but... You still, you plan for it. You never know what's going to come next. I'm going to go up to the cars. Rather than use the halogen, I'm just going to right in. Like that. Yep. A couple of pops. The deeper you get it in, the better you're going to be. I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. My wife's very supportive, but she knows the dangers. Sometimes I think it's a lot tougher on her than it is on me. She doesn't get to come to rescue one. You know, she's got to hear the news or whatever it is. And she knows, she knows by now, you know, after 14 years or 12 years or 15 or 100 years, whatever it's been. Um, now she knows if it's a fire emergency in Manhattan or in uh, this part of New York City, there's a one in five chance we're there. Yeah, it's always a lot of risk involved. If you accept that you may have to take risks and you do it, and sometimes you do it without hesitation, uh, I think that's expected of you. Chief, what do we do for you? Uh, they want to make me. Okay. Uh, you can just go down there, see what's going on. Yeah. I got a dose seminar. It'll pick up anything that okay. might be radioactive. It'll go off. They apparently, they still haven't found the uh, fire, right? Yeah. It's shit burning, but it's just, we can't get out. You know, it's behind these metal bars. So they just need fire saws or what? Fire the saw and the torch. We'll go down. We'll team up. And they're going to be running out of air now, so we'll switch out with them. What do they need to take four centuries to work? Where is it that they need? Saws off. I mean, uh, a rebar cutter. There's a square bars, you know, little thin iron right. bars. Right. Rebar cutter would be better than that. Faster. That's good too. That would go. It's gonna break out. Hey, bring a bottle if you can carry it. So what? The captain. Let me tell you what. The command post. The command post. Captain in the can there. Got hurt pretty bad. It was a good 500 foot crawl down the hallway to where the fire was. So zero visibility, so it took a long time to get to him. A lot of guys uh, ended up running out of air. I think it was five maydays at that job. Uh, most were just missing guys who actually just got separated from their boss. Um, and then the last two were for our guys that were unconscious. It was high levels of CO. Yeah, it was well over uh, 2,000 parts per million that we knew of. <clears throat> And about 400 is uh, critical to a person. 1,200 is usually dead. You know, he's going to the hyperbaric chamber now, so you figure maybe 8 or 9 o'clock tonight he'll be out of that. And then they'll hold him overnight to watch him. Just a tough situation to be in. Take care. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? I guess you're feeling it right, eh? Hey, uh, you know, keep, keep me down. down. Yeah, little CO, that's all. Little CO? Got my a lot of CO. Yeah, a lot of CO. Uh, that time we got to the fire, we got to it, put it out, a couple missing members. Actually, you know, I'm out of here and I'm way in there. So it ain't like knocking out a window and hanging out a window down here, you know? I'll see you later. Good to see you. All right, take care. You know, firemen take smoke and they, they take a beating and usually they're able to stumble out of there or crawl out of there and, you know, that's what happens. Uh, several people were knocked out, including myself, 
uh, because of the dense uh, smoke down there, without it even being any kind of terrorist uh, threat or operation. Every time you go out the door, you just don't know. You just don't know. Simple, nice, calm morning, right? Planning lunch, and next thing you know, going crazy. We'll always operate in the most aggressive mode consistent with safety. But with that said, we have to always consider there might be something else in there. PD, you know, is really not a responder agency. They're a patrol agency. They're, they're on the street, they're walking around, they're trying to prevent terrorism. That's really what their job is. If for some reason they can't prevent it and there's an incident, then it's ours. I mean, in other words, if there's a, a, a fire or an explosion or a building collapse, it's the fire department's jurisdiction at that point. Bigger. Bigger. Make them bigger. We're fighting our own war around here, so pretty good chance that we'll be heavily involved in whatever goes on. to put public pressure on the administration to keep all the current eight firehouses open. We kindly ask Mayor Bloomberg for his support on this issue. I'm a box watching a rig. I haven't seen a report right mm -hmm. When am I going to see this? He comes here. I don't even know where he lives. He's been here as long as I've been here. He's a good kid. This past month, we've been faced with the possibility of moving to Manhattan. And my take on the whole thing is this, the people here are just as important. Our life here in this neighborhood is just as important as um, the community, let's say, in the east side of Manhattan. What I want and what the guys who work in this company want is one thing. And the reality of the matter is if, if, if it's deemed that the need is more important uh, over there, then, then we'll end up going. There's a lot of unfinished business here that's left over from, from the 11th. We got the plaque dedication coming up, and everybody's doing their part. You know, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna do the best we can and, uh, you know, let the cards fall where they may. Well done. Nice job. These were uh, tools that um, the members of the company were carrying that day, and uh, it's pretty conclusive. And the way we know this for a fact is because if you look on the inside, you can see the raised letters 252, two, right? And if you look at the condition of this uh, tool, this is pretty much the condition that it was when it was pulled from the, uh, the ground. The you know, significance to us is that this is the only tieback that we have to uh, some of our guys. You know, I mean, these hand, these you know, these tools were in their hands when they when they perished. You know, so it means a lot to us. You know, and we're going to include these in the uh, you know in the plaque board downstairs. If we move, that goes with us. You know, I put it up there. I can pull it down. Captain of Squad 252, Captain Edward Metcalf. You'll have to excuse me. Uh, my allergies to these flowers is acting up, and my eyes are a little teary here. Uh, it is an honor to be here this morning, just as it was an honor to work, live, and play with these men that we honor here this morning. 
They all gave us a piece of the puzzle of life with their special talents and their diverse personalities. And they strengthen us each and every day. I can feel their touch here today in this room. I hear their laughter and I see their smiles. I can feel them and hear them and touch them because of you. You live the words courage and leadership each and every day. We thank you for the love that you possess. May we somehow return a small portion of that love to you. We thank you for the strength that you display. May we somehow add to that strength. May God bless you, the families, and may God bless America. On that fateful day, they had rescued numerous civilians who were trapped in an elevator. These people are alive today because of the actions of the men of Squad 252. It said that greater love have no man than to give his life for, for the life of his brother. These men were my friends, my brothers, and my heroes. And this is our tribute to them. If you look on the blackboard, the lower plaque on the board has a quote on it from a, a play by William Shakespeare. And uh, in this one scene, King Henry V is on a hilltop addressing his troops before they go into battle. And, and I quote, from this day to the end of the world, we in it should be remembered. We lucky few. We band of brothers. Gentlemen, take your seats. Gentlemen, everybody who wears this uniform has been in your seat. Thousands of guys have been here before you. We've all been through it. What you're not understanding is just how big a commitment that this is going to be in your life. This is a huge commitment. You got to really want this job more than anything else in the whole world. You got to want to be a fireman. When you get that diploma that day, it's not something that they hand off to you. It's in here, bro. It's in here. And you got to make it come out. One day, you will be old, you will be frail, and you will be slow. And someone will ask you, what did you do in your day? What did you do in your prime? When you were young and strong, and fast. And you'll tell them you are a New York City fireman. And when the day is done and the page is turned, that will be enough. How am I, Spartans? Good, sir!